Here now is David Goodfriend. He's an attorney and Democratic strategist in D.C. He also served in, as, in Bill Clinton's White House in a very different Democratic Party. But it's great to see you, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, um, so, Thanks for having me back. So here's the idea. Um, yeah. So a group of, uh, of folks have done computer modeling on this. Right. And they've shown that in counties in those three states that had paper ballots, um, Hillary did seven points better than in the places where there were voting machines. And right. so there's no evidence there was wrongdoing other than that. And yes. on that basis, they want to recount. Yes, and that margin would be enough to swing, let's say, the state of Wisconsin, right. where she lost by 27,000 votes. But this phenomenon you described would be 30,000 votes. Look, uh, I also read just tonight that Jill Stein, the independent uh, candidate, yes. has actually uh, taken action here uh, to uh, commence a recount. You know, um, I don't want to be anticlimactic here, but uh, it's a democracy. These are the rules. And in North Carolina right now, there's a Republican governor who is calling for a recount right. because he's behind. And I think that's all fair. I mean, recounts are part of the system. For in fact, sure. Donald Trump himself even said, hey, look, uh, I might call for a recount. I might sue. Um, of course, he won. And then he's not saying that anymore. But the point is anybody can in this system take that action. Now, there's a bigger political question here, I think, which is, do we as a country feel that our electoral process is legitimate? I do think it was a little bit damaging to say constantly the system is rigged, the system is rigged, and, and not have any kind of action come out of that. Well, you know, I believe that uh, uh, where federal courts have found that redistricting by race is unconstitutional, that's rigging. And that depletes people's confidence in the system. But wait, wasn't All this stuff is, is good if we can get it out there and exercise Well, I rights. agree with you completely that people have to believe in the system or right. else the system doesn't work. They can't think it's rigged or else it falls apart. Right. But the left mocked Trump for saying that, and now they seem to believe it, that it's rigged. And what bothers me is there's no actual evidence. I'm for recounts, actually, if there's evidence of wrongdoing, but this is like a 9-11 truther argument. We've never seen this before. It's weird. Therefore, something must have caused it. A conspiracy must have caused it. There's no evidence that there was rigging that I've seen. Uh, here, here's my view. Have the recount all you want. The state of Michigan hasn't even certified its vote yet. Let's not forget right. about that, That's right? right. Uh, this thing will go until the electoral college votes uh, next month. Uh, that's all fine. Again, I, I think the, I hate to be anticlimactic here. I just don't think that it's that big a deal. If somebody wants to have a recount, let them do it. It's under state law. It's under federal. These, these things all work. They're supposed to happen, and they're happening right now. Louisiana, for example, is having a runoff in its Senate race because the race was so close. That's supposed to happen. North Carolina, as I mentioned, the Republican governor is calling for a recount. Let them do it. I mean, these things should be done, and we all should agree that that's how the system works. Yeah, I mean, I, I substantively agree. I guess here's the context, though. The Democratic Party just had a Three Mile Island incident, okay? It just <laughs> melted down. Really the core overheat. No, I'm not mocking. I'm just, you know, no one anticipated it. It happened. The yes. party is in total disarray. It's splintered into all these various warring factions. Shouldn't Democrats be spending their time thinking about things like, what are we for? What's our program? What unites us other than hating Trump? You know, what are we offering voters? Shouldn't absolutely. they be doing no, that? I, I absolutely think so. And I, as I said, Jill Stein is the independent candidate who is taking action for the recount. And I, I, I guess that's her right. I, as a Democrat, think that, of course, the party ought to be introspective and reflective and thinking about what is going to work. And frankly, you know, we should pay attention to what happened with Bernie Sanders in this primary and how he was able to connect, connect especially with young people, and to show that there is enough discontent in the country on both sides of the political aisle that shouldn't we coalesce as a country around certain things. And look, we've heard about it, right? The trade agreements, infrastructure spending. We've heard Bernie Sanders say he would support Donald Trump. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can believe if, it. If we I get can it absolutely believe it. So, so to me, that is, we're, we're leading into Thanksgiving. Tomorrow we're going to have things. Like, let's suppose you and I are a couple of cousins having dinner at Thanksgiving tomorrow night, right? We should be able to have this conversation about the areas in which we agree that the country needs to focus on, like infrastructure, like bad trade agreements. Let's do that. Doesn't it make you sad, though, that when it mattered, Bernie Sanders, who I think has some principles and had a I really interesting so. campaign, transformed into kind of this mindless partisan robot on the road with Hillary Clinton, swallowing all of her nonsense, none of which he really believed, on her behalf, campaigning against Trump. Shouldn't when it really mattered, Bernie Sanders have said, honestly, I don't like Trump, but there's some things I agree with him on. He didn't say that. Uh, well, in point of fact, I, I think he said, I disagree with Hillary on a lot of things, but I like her better than Trump. He said Hillary on her worst day is still better than Trump, in his opinion. But he was a good little soldier. He wasn't really a revolutionary. Oh, he was this timid little house cat, actually. Oh, end. come on. Bernie Sanders yes, a house cat? Yes, he was, because he ran against the corruption of the Clinton machine of dynastic politics of everything that she represented and yet 
when she beat him in the rigged primaries, he all of a sudden became one of her most powerful yeah, surrogates. Yeah, well, look, you've got former Republican opponents of Donald Trump coming to kiss his ring. I mean, it's the same thing, right? The party coalesces around their But I'm not, I don't think anyone would accuse some of them Romney. of having principles. I mean, but look, it's different because the whole appeal of Bernie is he's a man of principle. He says what he thinks no matter what you think of it. I think Bernie Sanders has not had his last day. We're going to hear a lot more from him. And I actually think when you talk about the Democratic Party coalescing and trying to come around something, look for people like Bernie Sanders who says, I am absolutely apoplectic over the fact that we haven't addressed the working class issues of, you know, do I have a high enough wage? Do I have a, a, a mortgage I can even afford? Do I have a job? That's good. I think that's all great. I think that's sort of what we would hope for. So the Bernie as, Sanders, as he's to, 73, but we're not... In the third quarter, fourth quarter here? I mean, he's look, good. my 18 year old son voted for the first time in his life and voted for Bernie Sanders. So I think the guy's got a lot of gas left in the tank. And if not him, his followers. I think that's where the energy is in the Democratic Party. Did you your son? No, I said vote for whoever you want for. This is America. That's the wrong answer. Vote for who your father tells you to vote for. <laughs> I made that case from day one. <laughs> David, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. I believe in the patriarchy of my house. <laughs> not that it works. Anyway, <laughs> thank you.